Patty, so Patty. Hey. I'm the baddest of the bitch. Patty, look. And why be? Chase the dream. Come and get it. Yeah. I chased the dream and I caught it. I wanted this love, now I got it. Bad when they didn't know about me, they doubt me. Now everybody wanna know what I'm about to shout it out. I'm living the dream and I love it. I wanted this love, now I got it. Bad when they didn't know about me, they doubt me. Now everybody wanna know what I'm about to shout it out. Yeah, they call me Teddy and I'm so fucking bad. He woke up, chased a dream, turned me into a savage. I love killing rap tracks, got the habit. Woke up, spit a verse, now I'm one of the baddest. Won't follow a trend, that shit makes me sad To do something somebody else already had Can only do me on some regular shit I know I'm different, I'm no regular bitch I chased the dream and I caught it I wanted this love, now I got it Bad when they didn't know about me, they doubt me Now everybody wanna know what I'm about to shout it out I'm living the dream and I love it I wanted this love, now I got it Bad when they didn't know about me, they doubt me Now everybody wanna know what I'm about to shout it out Almost every single fucking job in the world I've cooked, I've cleaned, I was a go-go girl Dancing in a cage for a thousand an hour You can't give a young girl that kind of power It all went to my head, counting all that fucking bread I'm still a performer, but I keep my clothes on instead I keep on shaking booty and titties until I'm dead I work the hardest, so fuck what they said I chased the dream and I caught it I wanted this love, now I got it Bad when they didn't know about me, they doubt me Now everybody wanna know what I'm about to shout it out I'm living the dream and I love it I wanted this love, now I got it Back when they didn't know about me, they doubt me Now everybody wanna know what I'm about to shout it out planes, trains, cranes, names Got so many bitches wanna give me brains Fame, dang, one hell of a aim And if you fuck with this, then you'll never be the same If you really want it, then you better go and get it Cause you can't chase a dream slipping on your own image Who the fuck is gonna buy something you ain't been prepping Learn to perfect your craft, use it as a weapon Stop bitches from yapping before they get to stepping Even getting started, they're already standing at attention Yeah, they see what you be doing, love what you be saying And they want you to keep going, I don't hear no complaining I chased the dream and I caught it I wanted this love, now I got it Bad when they didn't know about me, they doubt me Now everybody wanna know what I'm about to shout it out I'm living the dream and I love it I wanted this love, now I got it Bad when they didn't know about me, they doubt me Now everybody wanna know what I'm about to shout it out I came up from a downfall Cause I switched my mind like a southpaw People think I'm lucky like an eight ball But I saw my dreams through the rainfall Chasing like an outlaw I've been busting and grinding And people know that I'm shining And I was twitching and whining I'm witching up like it's time And I find it funny thinking you know me I'm the man of the God, I'm the G.O.D. I chased the dream and I caught it I wanted this love, now I got it Bad when they didn't know about me, they doubt me Now everybody wanna know what I'm about to shout it out I'm living the dream and I love it I wanted this love, now I got it Back when they didn't know about me, they doubt me Now everybody wanna know what I'm about to shout it out Shout it out Shout it out Thinking you know me I'm the man of the God, I'm the G-O-D Shout it out Kat, you're so baddie. Welcome to my podcast. Hey, thanks for having me, Josh. I'm glad to have you in. Um, I chose pink and purple because I figured there would be some badass colors to show you in. Um, but you just dropped a track. Uh-huh. Uh, tell everybody the title of that track. It's called Chase the Dream. And uh, I found this crazy beat online. Um, as I usually do, I'll search free beats on YouTube and see what the best ones that come up. And yo, know, this beat was speaking to me forever. So finally purchased it and ran with it. And so uh, tell me about that. So do you just like scroll through beat stars or YouTube looking to beats to find the right one? Or like, do you know producers? Like, how do you find beats? What do you like uh, to do? Well, my producer, Stefan Patrickson, who is accredited with Who Let the Dogs Out Hook by the Baja Men, um, he used to make the beats for me, or if I liked something, he would remix it to similar sound. But honestly, it's just so much easier to find stuff on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You look it up, and mm -hmm. I just listen, and uh, like I'll, I'll usually put in like sad hip-hop beat or... Pumpy, or you know, whatever. So what yeah. you're feeling at that time. Exactly. And so your lyrics, are they like as you write things and as you work with other artists, like do you find your the tracks that you write are influenced by what's going on in your life? Um not so much anymore. Um, but yeah, and when I first started writing my own stuff, which was probably early 2018, um, yeah, the songs were generated more to like 
what was going on, the police riots and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. And uh, yeah, it, it uh, you know, it changes, I guess. You, 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 there's always something to write about. Mm-hmm. Doesn't Absolutely. Matter. Yeah. And now, so you, you, you mentioned that you've worked with uh, a really good producer. Uh, tell me, tell me his name and, and who's he worked with. That is Patrick Stephenson. Uh, he's accredited with the Who Let the Dogs Out. Who let the dogs out? Who, 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 who? Yeah. That's really cool. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah. So what's it? What was it like? And what did you learn working with like uh, a producer of that sort? I fuck, guy taught me everything I know, and I I took it and ran with it from there. These two, my manager and my producer. They were together for years before I came along. I used to just go to the studio and never go in. But eventually, like, he's just so good at his job. And and he made me sound so good from the beginning. I didn't like my very beginning because it was a lot of auto-tune and shit. Okay. (laughs) So, but, you know, he's definitely brought me a long way. Auto-tune is, like, tricky to figure out, like, what you like, you know? Yeah. Because there's, like, how, really, how intense, like, do you want, like, a... It can make or break a song. Yeah, it's like, if it's not <laughs> light enough, it doesn't have that characteristic, that Like, texture. you almost want to hear it sometimes, yeah, right? but if there's too much of it, you're you're sounding like, T-Pain? you sound like a <laughs> robot, T-Pain, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, it's fun to play with that. Yeah. Um, okay. Tell me, what, what do you do as an artist to have fun? Um, shit, to have fun? I have three dogs at home. Um, and shit, I don't know. My girlfriend just had a baby, so that's fun. Like, mm. she's such a genius, this little girl. And, you yeah, know, I'm just, my dog's in at home. I'm learning and learning and learning. Now I'm just trying to teach myself stuff. Yeah, <laughs> sounds real chill. Well, and yeah. you, so you are starting to, how to do beats, how to produce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, uh, I've been recording for probably about six or seven years now. And honestly, just, I wanted to learn more because, Every, you can have everybody do jobs for you, but you really want to get somewhere in life, it's better just to learn it yourself. So this way, I can have better conversations with my producer. When I want something done, I'll know how to ask for it, right? Mm. And it's just, it's, I love learning. It's so exciting. Like, I took law for a semester at Fanshawe just fucking because. I don't even like fucking law. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to become a lawyer, but I just like learning. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Learning. That's, uh, <laughs> that's where... I don't know, how do I put this? You learn things, and then you can do things. It's important to learn <laughs> things, you know? Very. You can't spend all your time doing things, mm-hmm, right? Because mm-hmm. then you're not learning anything. Right. Um, but then at, the more you learn, you can kind of fuse with other projects. And, you know, like the more you learn about law, like you you can understand uh, copyright law better exactly. since you did uh, a term in law. Yes. Like uh, you, there's so, m- when you're an artist, you need so many people around you. And if I can just take a few of those jobs, I don't have to pay so many other mm-hmm. people to do it. Mm-hmm. Like, you can have a business manager, but wouldn't you just rather learn how to do your own accountant and shit like that? Yeah. Because, honestly, it's just a course away. Like, mm-hmm. you're, you're depriving yourself of knowledge if you don't want to learn this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and in the end, honestly, when you become big and there's lots of money involved, you can really get hurt by some of these people if you don't know them mm-hmm. and you don't trust them, right? So Even, say, in terms of making beats, you know, you can't, and recording yourself, you can still go to a pro studio, yeah, oh, yeah. but you can do demos and work on, yeah. you know, it's like, what's a guitarist, Try new things. a guitarist who doesn't actually have a guitar at home? Like <laughs> how, how, how much experience can he actually right? get, right? What do you, you know? know? He would have to have his own guitarist. So you, you yeah. can be a guitarist and still like go record in the studio, you know, and yeah. even pay another guitarist to work with you. But, you know. I'm going too far down the guitarist rabbit hole, but it's like... No, but it's the same thing, right? Because now, instead of... I won't know how I sound until the song's recorded, I can try a little bit at home and know, okay, that's going to sound good. Mm -hmm. Because now I'm getting into the point of of my artist career where I'm starting to sing a lot more and I'm trying out risky melodies. And you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm doing different kinds of bar counts and I'm just really really trying different things so mm-hmm. it's nice to be able to try these things at home first before I go and make a fool of myself and yeah. he's like what the fuck are you doing you know it allows you to experiment yeah. yeah 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 why not well and that's cool and so okay and so we're, we were joking about like rap working well with every genre right it's like <laughs> yeah like are there any other genres you would like to try that you, think you could do like country or like do some rock stuff or i think country is the only one we haven't done we have an excellent country friend of ours whose name is michael rule um excellent uh, as soon as you hear him you're like damn he's country mm. so that is something i would really love to do but uh, we have 
two rock songs out. Um, one is called Don't Assume. These are not available anywhere. Sorry. If you want them, you have to DM me and I will send you free views. But um, a lot of music we don't release just because it didn't fit what we were doing at the time. But we have so much. Um, don't Assume. I got a song called Pussy Whip. That's rock music. Mm -hmm. um, that's a good one. Pussy Whip. Pussy Whip. You don't fuck your pussy whip. Yeah. <laughs> I already want to hear that song. Yeah, it's good songs. We've done, and I've done, um, we did a little bit of EDM music. I got a, a techno one. Like, I've done, yeah, I, I love it. I would really like to do Country Next. Mm -hmm. that's, that's awesome. Well, it's like, uh, I'm looking forward to checking out those tracks. I'm definitely going <laughs> yeah, to DM you. I'm going to send them to you. I'm for definitely sure. going to DM you for about sure. getting some early access. <laughs> um, so tell me, in terms of like exclusive content and industry, things. Are you thinking about NFTs or are you stepping into that space or not yet? I have seriously really thought about it. And I, I discussed it with him because when you're on YouTube, you see those videos all the time and everybody's doing it. And fuck, I don't know. what Are, are you doing it? I'm definitely doing it. Yeah, yeah I'm getting yeah. into it. I'll connect you with some of my people. Sweet. Um, we've got a big project coming okay. this year. Um, name drop Project LB52. Back to you and your music. Back to me. You have collabed with a bunch of other artists in uh, throughout your career. Okay. Um, how do you feel working with other artists um, helps you grow as a writer? Uh, definitely, because yo, yo, and when somebody sends you a track and they're like, "Yo, will you do a sixteen for this?" It's so fun because okay. When you do a feature on a track, you kind of want to emulate their sound as well to fit the track. It's just fun to see how other people do it. Um, I did a song. It hasn't been released at all, but I did a song with a guy called Echo the Element. This guy is like, I swear to God, Eminem's son or something. He's so great. But I think even though the song didn't get released, it was still one of my best features. It was such a great song. It's it's amazing to collaborate and see what can come out of you mm -hmm. from going on somebody else's song. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, it's important to challenge yourself as yes. an artist as well. It's like it's like um, like we were talking earlier about like songwriting being like a kind of like a job in the industry. Mm -hmm. And it's like, all right, let me see if I can write a song about this. Yeah, write a song about that. Right, it allows you to test yourself and flex that. Can I write a good song, Muscle? And yes. the more you work, the more you learn, the more you can do, the big, faster you grow. That's, that's our brand, totally. It, we do songs that are not typical songs. Like, fuck, man. Muff Diver. Muff walking Diver's Vagina. Hilarious. Pussy like, on My Fingers. Pussy on My Fingers. Yeah. That was actually the Pussy very first song fingers. I ever recorded. Yeah. yeah. That's a badass song. You that's, know? A, that's a sick one. It was really fun going through <laughs> your discography. That's, that's <laughs> the, the main prep that I do before interviews is going through an artist's discography. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Because, because media coverage and social media and stuff, these are all like kind of new world elements to music industry, but the yep. music is what I like to. I want to get to know what music you do. Yes, and, right? And... Uh, because that's where you find those nuggets of gold inside yourself and inside each other. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's exactly why you have got an interview with CBC. Because <laughs> you're badass. Oh, shit. The, just the way she approached me was so amazing. She's like, I want to introduce you to our audiences. Like, did she just say she wants to make me a household name? Because mm -hmm. that's pretty dope. So I've done news before. Uh, I went to New York and I was on their news down there and on their regular channels, their cable TV. But um, London is showing love lately mm -hmm. and I am so reciprocating it because this is amazing. Like it took a long time for me to become a real pillar of hip hop legendary mm -hmm. shit in London. We were talking about one of your your approaches was with your branding was like those trucks that people have seen. <laughs> People know your trucks. Yeah. You're oh, yeah. literally on a billboard. The Taddy So Baddy yeah. man. Yeah, Taddy So Baddy truck. So, yep. so tell me about like how, how we've been developing that. We just saw another truck today with your branding on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my manager was the bright idea. Like he just said, you know what? Fuck, they're doing it in big fucking country, in the big cities where the music is popping, like LA and California. You see their faces plastered all over trucks and, and buses and stuff like that. And even here you see it. Why not do that on our own vehicles? What better way 
to promote than to self fucking promote. And nobody else has touched this anywhere here in the city. Nobody else is doing what we're doing. So it makes us stand out from the rest. And honestly, it's it's helped out so fucking much. Actually, we just sold one of the trucks. Somebody bought it and they wanted to keep my name and picture on it. And I was like, no fucking way, really. So now this dude's just driving around with a plow on the truck. That's Patty badass. truck. Well, it's, it's important to grow your community, you know? <laughs> yeah, and, that's dope. Yeah. So you are you are part of the indigenous community. Yes. Yeah, and so uh, indigenous indigenous music uh, is something that is is growing. Um, tell me about the support you're getting from the indigenous indigenous community. I don't get any. No? <laughs> no. But honestly, uh, I haven't touched on that yet. Um, I, I'm looking into going to the grant route because I, I do want to touch on the indigenous. My grandmother was in the residential school era and she was ripped away from her family at a young age. And honestly, my manager loves that this can be such a big part of my career because Indigenous have their own music awards. We have our own everything. Like we have our own lawyers, our own judges, our own, we have our own everything. We don't need none of y'all. Mm. <laughs> so to be recognized in that um, side of the industry for from my own people, I can't wait. So I'm I'm definitely going to hit that route. It will be happening very soon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's, it's, it's good to have those people behind you. And honestly, like, the more and more we're going about our world these days, it's like connecting with who you are and yeah. your roots is very It's important. become a big thing yeah. Yeah, lately. Yeah, yeah. Try, we're all trying to find ourselves, I yeah. guess. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so, um, and honestly, with the grants and stuff, it really gives you a good opportunity because they'll help you. You want to work with an Indigenous um, writer or producer or beat maker or whatever, you can get the opportunity to do that and they'll help you. Yeah, yeah. So it's excellent. But and yeah, it's a culture I'm still learning myself because we we really weren't raised that way. I was raised Italian. Mm. So I'm just getting in touch with the indigenous side, which is very heartwarming. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, in bringing your own communities together as well, you know. Fuck yeah. Yeah. And uh, so you uh, have released a bunch of dope music videos uh, <laughs> on, on your YouTube. And... Uh, what does it feel like to record a video? It's so fun. Yeah. It's fun to... Uh, I haven't done it in a couple of years, but it is so fun to go shopping. I love wearing high heels. I love wearing tight dresses. Um, so, And it's just fun. I, I work with a really excellent video guy. Now we finally found our crew. We're slowly putting our crew together. So my boy got Briz. Um, his videos are coming along absolutely gorgeous and now that we've been doing things uh, for a couple years and got a couple videos down i think we did three videos together now Mm -hmm. um it it just gets better every time it's so fun and it's 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 fun to see what other people will make like a treatment for your video it's cool to see what people okay this is what i'm getting from this song let's see how it'll look in a in a video Mm -hmm. and it's always all about the video everybody needs a good visual right Mm -hmm. So yeah, that'll be fun. Well, I mean, and that's where we come back to branding. Branding mm-hmm. is everything. You know, mm-hmm. having an image as an artist. And even, I saw this color chart at one point, um, how to choose a color to represent yourself with based on like what like character you want to play in the story. Okay. And, and it's like a orange is for like an old Western kind of rebellious color. And and uh, oh, anyway, it was just- so in- much sense. Eh? It was just interesting. And like green is like youthful and like nature and- you know, anyway, it was just it was cool thinking about the different elements of branding. That is so cool. Um, and uh, and this is like where we get to like the the business, understanding the business behind the music industry, understanding how to uh, you know not even just music related, like how not just owning your masters and like being able to understand a contract, mm-hmm. but um, marketing and, <laughs> yeah. and oh, yeah. even you touched on writing grants. Mm-hmm. That's that's a whole, that's a that's whole, whole thing. thing. That's a legal thing. <laughs> right? And yeah. And, uh, like, you got to write them a whole business proposal to get yeah, a grant and yeah. say, like, this is where every dime is going. Yeah, you can't just, Please like, give it to me. make music and put it on Spotify. Yeah. No, you have to, you have to write yeah, the Yeah, you got to have, have a plan, to do the business. Um, Now, tell me about, so what's your experience with contracts? Do, do you have contracts with producers and, and managers? No, nope, I only have one contract, and that's with him. Mm-hmm. And that just pretty much said, you're mine, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And I signed that a line. Yeah. But no, I, I mean, it's, you know, he, he does his best as a manager. He's gotten me this far. Oh, fuck. Remember that one time one guy said, what the fuck did your manager do for you? Excuse me? You know my name, don't you? That's what he did for me. He got me here this far. I am who I am. 
because somebody believed in me. Mm -hmm. So it definitely helps to have that kind of backup. There's a lot of artists that are just doing it by themselves and fucking God, God help them and God bless them because a lot of these people go hard by themselves for themselves. Mm -hmm. It's it's like you need to have a team because like you end up having to wear so many hats. Nowadays, you yeah, you need out. a good yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah. But and so yeah, absolutely. Hats off to the the artists who are like doing all the jobs <laughs> all by themselves. It's like definitely an uphill battle, right? But it's like it's also more fun and enjoyable is, with a yeah. team because you don't have to stress about everything yourself. And it's great to bring everybody's minds together, like us three in the studio. It's crazy to see how a song will come out in the end because it's like, yeah, we all put a little bit in it fucking even better now mm -hmm. you know so yeah i love that kind of shit you mentioned you did a video contest at one point um are, do you think that engaging with the community is important for artists to make connections and grow yeah oh yeah yeah i was an artist for a long time and i never went out to do shows um and i was still calling myself well not i wasn't calling myself but i was still getting called canada's best female rapper da 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 but Eventually, I started getting invited to do shows. And wow, did that really help? You really need that, um, that social aspect because you got to you want to see what everybody else is doing and you want your peers to like you and, um, you know, give you praise and, and speak your name. So but now it's like, OK, now the city is working hard for me, which is a blessing. Thank you all so much. Mm -hmm. Now it's I want to go outside the city. Now we're growing in Toronto. Um, I think I do really good in, in Germany and Israel and stuff like that. So that's really cool. Mm -hmm. This is fun to see how other other cultures besides my own take me in. It's like, wow, man, no, we can relate on that level and we don't even speak the same fucking language. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. love it. Well, because music is a feeling. And... Isn't it beautiful? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. And so I, like, I want to ask about your podcast, because in, in addition to you like reaching out to, to communities and like reaching out to new cities, you're creating your own, you have your own podcast you've started mm -hmm. so that you can connect directly with your fans. Um, tell me a bit about your podcast and what you want to do with it in the future. Ooh, so the podcast. Yeah, that's coming along. Um, it's, it's so much fun. You can just sit there and blab. But honestly, I've been doing a lot of research lately just to make the episodes better because I want... Um, I don't want to just sit there and just talk shit the whole time. Enough people do that. Um, I really want to bring something different to the table. So we all get scammed on the internet. Mm -hmm. I have been scammed so many times, even just buying a winter jacket. It's like, fucking bro, why do you got to post something that you're not even selling? So I'm just trying to expose all these kind of people. And I think I'm, I'm going to do the video route and have package opening. And, and that's where we're going to go with that. So mm -hmm. now that... You're doing the video thing too. Mm -hmm. um, it's a new option and it's very exciting. So I'm excited to do new things with the video. I can't give everything away, but I definitely want to... I'm just putting more effort into the episodes. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, we're going to have a new uh, new session too. It'll be called Hashtag Bitch Talk. <laughs> hashtag Bitch Talk. So that'll be the new part of this. Taddy yeah. So Baddy Bitch Talk. Taddy yeah. So Baddy's Bitch Talk. So it, the podcast is called Blunt and Upfront with Taddy So Baddy. Because my brand is called Blunt and Upfront. Um, and yeah, so we're going to have a, a segment now called Bitch Talk. That's the new, fun, exciting thing. And it'll just be strictly talking shit. I like that. <laughs> well, I listened to your pilot episode and that got me really excited about what you're doing. Because you've, you've done a lot of jobs in the industry. You, you said that you've done acting and modeling, mm. you know, and you've played in those routes. Um, tell me about your experience with, uh, with acting. Yeah, fuck. I've done music videos for other people. And it's fun to see what they want from you and what you can do for yourself. Um, I mean, I didn't really touch too much on the acting. Now I just do my own acting for my own music videos. But even that is fun just to see. I love pretending. Mm -hmm. Like, it's so fun, you know? You put on a beat and for three minutes, I'm somebody else. Mm -hmm. So... When the video comes along, it's like, wow, you really, you can really get crazy sometimes. You get to step <laughs> into a whole new way of expressing yourself. Yeah. That's cool. It's fun. It's fun to uh, kind of assume, like, now you've got your rapper hat on. Now you are, like, <laughs> I'm going to be a cool. singer. I'm going to be a yeah. dancer. It brings you that energy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's cool. And so okay. um, you, have, you have a couple tracks that you are performing today. Sure, yes. Um, yes, I am. Your new track, Chase the Dream, you're performing. And... Uh, 
In there, you mentioned you were a go-go dancer at one point. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like a very fun, oh, uh, fuck yeah. energetic environment. Tell me about that. Have you always lived here in London? Yeah. Okay, so do you remember the Phoenix? The, the club, Phoenix, the Phoenix? The club. On uh, Queens and Richmond? Mm-hmm. Um, and then they turned it into that fucking restaurant. Anyway, um, I think I was, I just turned 18. And my very first job, like regular job, was Sammy Savlaki. So when they used to have the stands downtown, the club owner saw me and was like, yo, girl, how old are you? And I was like, I'm 18. Would you like to be a go-go dancer? I was like, what's a go-go dancer? But he's like, girl, all you got to do is wear something skimpy in a cage. We'll feed you alcohol all night. We'll give you we'll give you a thousand dollars an hour. Jeez. I was like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? He's like, no, bro, I swear to God, come come to the Phoenix um, whatever day at eight o'clock at night. Show up, the bouncers. I didn't even have to show ID. I was like, I work here. I know so-and-so. They're like, yeah, we know you. Come on in. <laughs> Fucking VIP service was so fun. And honestly, uh, I met Beanie Man there. Fuck, I did a lot of fun shit. That, that club was so fun. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I've done a lot of jobs. I used to be a stripper. So I'm really used to the club and performing. I've always mm-hmm. been a performer, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and that's funny because like you said, like being an artist is like you get to put your rapper pants on and like and you get to perform as this uh this little what is it it's like it's like your own way of characterizing yourself yeah it's, it's like, just a little pretend session right yeah, now yeah yeah it's uh it's the fun part about being a creative you've created yes. this other persona you just step into yeah i saw that you're a scorpio mm-hmm. that so <laughs> do, do you do you look into astrology at all or do yeah you... oh yeah i believe in that shit wholeheartedly i am a scorpio through and through mm-hmm. i am very enthusiastic i love hard i get pissed off hard um, yeah, and if, if I love you, I'll love you for life. But, uh, yeah, I'm very moody and uh, very hard in my way. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm very stubborn. It's awesome. Well, I mean, it's funny because, like, I remember at one point in my life being like, oh, that stuff doesn't make any sense. It's right? all just yeah, yeah. bullshit. But and it really does. After I sat down and really started to look at it seriously, I was like, oh, my God, I'm a, I'm a Capricorn. I am a Capricorn. Isn't it this crazy? Is crazy. I was yeah, like, I'm like, how the fuck does this work? How do they know? Right? How do they <laughs> know? Like, and like, it's like, Looking at, uh, like, people be like, horoscopes are so general. I'm like, yes, but if you read it every day for, like, two years, you're like, oh, there's a this pattern here. This right? It knows me. How it does it does. know? It does. That's crazy. Yeah, you have to know what's going on in your own life yes. in order to know what to it get means. It. In order to understand yeah. it. Yeah. And that's what it's given me. It's given me, like, oh, that's why this is happening. Right? right yes. Yeah. You kind of get the make sense thing and put the puzzle pieces together and think, holy fuck. Um, since I've been doing music, any time that I'm either in the car listening to my song or me and him are talking about our music, I will always see 1111, sometimes twice a day. And when you see that and you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, that's a sign that you are on the right path. So whenever we are doing music and I see 1111, I'm like, fuck, this is exactly where we're supposed to be right now. Like, this is exactly where I'm supposed to be going. Um, I think out of all the things I've ever done in my life, um, I always try to do everything to the best of my ability. I always want to be the best in my group. Like when I was a stripper, I was the best fucking stripper. I learned all the goddamn full tricks. I was the biggest fucking money maker. Like everybody loved me. Everybody knew me. And then now that I do music, it's the same shit, bro. I am just getting better and better. And everybody's beginning to know me and respect me now that I've had longevity. And I'm proving that this is really where I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And I think music is one of the best things I've ever done in my life. And, and like, honestly, this is the, 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 I don't know. I've grown so much doing this, but this is on, it feels so right. You know, mm-hmm. sorry, I rambled on like a no, motherfucker, that's good. but it, what? this is the best thing in my life. This feels so right. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, uh, <laughs> the vibe I get from you is like, you're a hustler. You work hard. <laughs> like, you, that's him. He, he put it all in me. Yeah. Well, I mean, and having strong people around yeah, you, you like, empowers you. It's like coming back to, it's important to have a team. Mm-hmm. The people you surround yourself with. Like, uh, did your girlfriend give you a lot of support in what you do? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Oh, dude, this used to be the master bedroom. Aww. My, my, my wife. She sacrificed. I, yeah, she was like, I believe in you. Mm-hmm. You can take this room yeah. and uh, and build, build the studio in here. And it's like, Aww. you know, trying to make a name for myself, build yeah. my branding. It's like, it's yeah. a slow burn in the music industry, yeah. right? And, it is. It is, but uh, the know, more you're around, the more you keep showing your face, yeah. you will you will get your spot. And things things I believe that um, things if it's meant to be, it it will be mm-hmm. a slow burn. And you know, so I'm not interested in like forcing myself to grow. No, I believe right that too, though. I felt that so much yeah. because I always say 
the longer it takes to get, the longer I'll be in there. Exactly. You know, I don't want to be famous overnight and just have fame. I want to yeah. have a career. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like, oh, geez, the island boy has just popped into my nice. head. It's, it's so it's like, fucking island boy. It's like, it's, it's funny. <laughs> it's just so funny to see. To <laughs> they're see. doing it, bro. They're, they're living their best it. life. Well, and it's like, they're, they're, they were just like randomly putting out a video. It's like now they're right? rapping. And it's like, and it's like, there's controversy around them that, right? And they, they're just like goofing around and it's like one way or the other, they're getting press coverage. Right? Good and or bad. Anybody yes. bitching about them saying they suck, they're stupid, it's like Bro. you're talking about them, stupid. You're, you're validating them. Yes! Oh my God. When the white girl song came out and, and the hate train fucking left the station, oh my God, bro. So many people used to say, stop mentioning this shit. You're giving her fucking press. Yeah. And I was like, bro, people used to make posts about it every day. I was like, keep talking, motherfuckers. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> It's, oh, it's, so good though. it's funny how um, like controversy does that, you know, and I, yeah. it, I, I'm reminded now of like N.W.A. and like the early days of hip hop <laughs> yes. and all the, yeah, they all were, the they grimy, were just like, like uh, chaos around the scope yeah, of the yeah. hip hop community. It's like, no wonder it blew up. It's like there, it started with so much controversy and people pay attention. They just to couldn't it. stay yeah, away from it. You couldn't. Yeah. And it's and that's. And that's what's fun about, like, because when you put on the tatty so baddie hat, you're, like, stepping into that yeah, kind yeah. of, like, powerful, aggressive, you know. I will admit, though, I don't like going at it with other artists. Mm-hmm. So there is an artist, a female artist, who will remain nameless. But this broad straight up made a post about, um, she did this thing. They used to do, like, rapping in cars or some shit. And um, so they filmed her doing her verse in the car and she made a diss about me, but then proceeded to make a post saying, no, I have nothing against her. I respect her and da, da, da. But I'm like, okay, but why would you say such horrible things if you like me? Like, I don't understand. She's like, no, girl, it's for the music and da, da, da. I'm like, I know, but but that shit makes me feel like you don't like me and you got something yeah. against me, but you don't want to say it to my fucking face. Don't be sneaky. If you don't like me, don't like me. Stick with that. Don't play both sides because now you're trying to come out saying, no, I like her, I respect her, and da da da. But she changed quick because I wouldn't go at it with her. Mm. I'm like, bro, I'm not playing these childish games. I love the controversy, but I'll have my own controversy, not because I'm fighting with you. I'm not giving you attention mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want female artists to be fighting each other. I didn't want to bring that out, yeah. you know? There's certain people in, in the industry and just the energy they have and the vibe and their so intentions. Hurt. Gross. It's like and this- honestly, you could just because you're you, you mm-hmm. know? And it's like, what? It's a, this is we only want to work with people who want to enjoy doing good fun things together yeah. not not yeah. this not this i'm better than you we're drama bigger, yeah yeah we're not children there's we're all equal here we're all enjoying ourselves having <laughs> fun fun yeah. yeah it's it's you don't need to it's like the competition it doesn't really need to be competition there's yeah. it's a fun the competition yeah. i like but yeah. I, there's no need to get nasty with no. it like you know i i don't like that fake sneak this and shit so people getting nasty are losing the competition. Yeah, exactly right? Yeah. It and it's is. like, yeah. okay, you want to get you want to get attention for the wrong reason. Mm-hmm. Good press or bad press is still press, but I, it hurts when it's bad press. Like, yeah. I've had people hate me for a year, you know? Like, and just, it comes every day something new. And it's like, fuck, man, why? What did I do? The first video I ever posted that went viral, I got like 20,000 views in a couple of days. And all I did was dance to a Nicki Minaj song and I did a cover. Mm-hmm. But the things that people said about me were so mean. I'm like, bro, did I kill your dog or something? Like, <laughs> I don't even fucking know you. And they're telling me to go kill myself oh, and shit. I'm like, for what? All I did was a, a fucking cover. So the, people are really harsh. When it's harsh, it does hurt. What do you do every day so that you have a good day? It's like, if you need to have your coffee first thing or you need to read or yoga, what do you do? What's important to you? I usually wake up and go have a cigarette. <laughs> That's your um, I'll smoke some weed. I let my dogs out. We'll have a little bicker back and forth. This is my best friend right here. And honestly, without him, my life is shit, bro. We bicker back and forth like an old married couple and that's what keeps me alive. Then I got a hit song. Yeah. Right? Like, yo, we we go at each other hard like we're really fighting, but it's all jokes. And he, his personality, honestly, have saved my life. I don't know anybody that would treat me like he does just because I'm such a difficult person. Like, my own family don't even like me just because I'm just... I'm like that. I don't know. I need somebody that can just deal with me or fuck off. But um, yeah, so I, without get- him, my day wouldn't be no fun. Like I, I need that. But And then 
just the feeling, okay, I have a studio upstairs. I have a microphone. I have a laptop. I have, I, I have the knowledge and know-how. I can go do whatever I want. That's fun waking up knowing that, hey, I got everything I need upstairs and I can go do my job. Having all your resources. Yeah, and, and now that I do the music full-time, that's my only job, it's the best feeling in the fucking world. That mm -hmm. makes me so happy. The first thing I do is wake up and go into my studio. From the sound of it, your answer is, what makes your life so awesome that makes you do it every day? You, you wake up, you get some nature, you engage with family, <laughs> and you go do your creative passion. Fuck yeah. You are already living the perfect life. I love it. Chasing yeah. the dream. Chasing the dream. <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, I ask guests to ask a question to okay. other people in the music industry. And so okay. here's, sometimes you want to write a million songs in one day. Sometimes you feel like you're terrible and you can't get, you're not going anywhere. It's mm -hmm. like, what keeps you going through the hard parts of being an artist? Knowing that when I really put my mind to it, I'm a fucking beast, bro. I am a, I am a force to be reckoned with. Um, I know what I'm capable of. So just, oh my God, just knowing that what I can do, I can do on my own because of the people that believed in me and taught me and brought me this far. I can't let them down by not doing it, mm -hmm. you know? It's the best feeling to know that I am now self-sustainable in my career. Self-sustainable as an artist. You have yeah. a good product. Yeah. That, yeah, and yeah. I'm comfortable in it now. And I've really took the time to learn both sides, the career and the business. I'm taking, I'm taking it so serious. Like this is the, the most important thing to me in my life. He pushed me to do it. I didn't want to do it at the beginning, but I'm so glad I fucking did. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad I stuck with it. I love that. And uh, and kind of like same question, but kind of rephrased is okay. like, what are you doing this for? What's your ultimate goal through your art? Fuck, just to show my kid that, yo, you can have the shittiest fucking beginning, but you can make it the best in the end. It's all up to you. Mm -hmm. Life is what you make it. I used to be a shitty fucking person and I did shitty fucking things. And... I had to change or I was going to die. So now that I better myself, I just want to give that to my kid. You know, don't ever... Bullying will go away. Bad times will fade, man. Just keep pushing through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, one song that I really liked was My Depression. Uh, yeah, Welcome right? to yeah. My Depression. Welcome that's a just... deep, deep, harsh mm -hmm. one. Yeah, I, I heard you. It's, that's one of those songs. It's like, so there's, there's two kinds of songs that you put out as an artist. One of them is like the hits, you know, mm -hmm. like your, your, let's say pussy on my fingers and moth diver, like your fun, yep. your fun tracks, you yep. know, and then the rest, you know, the other half of your discography is like pouring your heart out on that tracks reality. and talking about your life. And, Fuck and it's, yeah. um, myself, I find it hard to do the hits. Like I, I, music for me, I, it's just a way to get my emotions out. And yeah. Just do that. Yeah. I mean, I do so many other things, right? right? It's like, so for me, it's like a journal, it's a diary, it's here's how I'm feeling. And, um, and uh, I just love my favorite track to listen to by an artist are not the hits. There's, I like the listening. The real tracks. I like yes. listening to the real, the raw, this yeah. is who I am. This is exactly how I am. Yeah. Exactly how I am. I want to know what this person really is like. Mm -hmm. Like there's an artist out there, his name is Tom McDonald. And on oh, every yeah. single song, he takes you there. Like he will really show that, that un, you know, that unadulterated side of him like they're just real 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 and I fucking love that but yeah yo he can still bring the hits mm -hmm. but yeah that's definitely a major important part of being an artist is you have to give that reality to them you have to show them I am a real human being and I go through what you go through mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it it's like this is you know like the conversations we've had today are are about ultimately how much we love the balance and engaging in both and even realizing that there are two sides to the industry. Yeah, There's yep. the hits and the feeling tracks. Mm -hmm. There's the producers and songwriters and the performers. The Would you write songs and sell them for two other artists? Is that something you would well, consider? He, he's done that many times. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would, but it's, I'm actually in the process of doing a song for somebody because they're doing a, a brand for clothing and they wanted a theme song to play in the gym and shit. Um, it's hard as fuck to write a song for somebody else. Mm -hmm. It's not hard to write a feature for a song for you to be on, but for me to actually write a song to give to somebody else, that's fucking hard. Mm -hmm. I, I don't like it. 
I would never do it again. I'm going to do this project with this guy and hopefully nobody will ever ask me to do that again because right. it's not something I like. But I mean, I will do it to go out of my comfort zone, but it's not something I enjoy. Yes, you know, it, I you, like being true to my own shit. You want to do it for you. Yeah. 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 And it's like, I believe it's important to take those opportunities that come at you. Fuck it's yeah. Like, You've you got to grow. Camera. Someone's like, hey, would you, Taddy, do you want to photograph my wedding? It's like, <laughs> right? uh, uh, sure. I've never done that. Let me try. It's I like, have a camera. <laughs> maybe you try it out. And then you're like, okay, that is not for me. That yeah, is... but at least you could say you did it. At least you could do it. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I know uh, another artist that came through, uh, Dan the Lost Boy. He's a rapper and his, he, he does, he writes promo songs and he oh, shit, releases eh? NFTs. And yeah, but he seems it, like that kind of guy. He, like he could do it with ease. He's, he, and he does. It's yeah. like, he will, every Friday, he'll write, essentially, it's like a jingle, like an ad. Sweet. A full length, he'll write a whole rap song Holy about fuck. a product or about no a brand. No shit. Uh, Gary V gave him a shout out. If you've heard the Gary V name. No, no. No, it's big and he's a digital marketer. But, and That's like, awesome. Lots of big names. Uh, Dan has wrote a song for and he's just engaging with these brands and stuff because that's, that's fucking dope. we all do different things in the industry right why he, not he's really enjoying doing that and like he he has songs that he has written for a major Jamaican artist and the guy was like give me more please yeah. I'm like holy fuck dude but and he writes N-I-D-G-A songs yeah I was like fuck bro you're not even black but it's yeah a- he does it and it's like wow okay yeah. Yeah, it's um, well, and that's and that's fun as well. Being a songwriter opens up the doors to be able to write about things that you would otherwise not be able to say. You can write songs for men, for women. You can engage in the art, and yeah, it's like on one level, it's like um, you're not. That's like kind of a hit thing. You're you're just writing a song about a topic, you know, about a subject to create an atmosphere. It's so crazy. Yeah, it's like there's so many levels to the music industry. It's not just. Writing songs, recording them, putting them on Spotify. It's no, like, you really have, whole you have to learn about do. the whole thing. Right. Uh, so if we, uh, sorry, I'm gonna yeah. put this in there too. Um, that's not the only song I've done for somebody. I actually wrote two songs for a movie. You did two songs for yeah, a movie. Yeah, there is a movie. I can't remember what the movie is called. I'm so sorry to this You're guy. In a video, right? No, that Daniel guy. Remember the Queen Pin? The songs about the murder and shit, where I was the Queen Pin boss. I'll play it for you right now. Yeah, play it. I, it's really weird and awkward, but he gave me the yeah, lyrics. Yeah, yeah. He gave me the I lyrics, but it's like weird beats and shit. And it was just, I don't even know where the lyrics are. I like are. the, I like this. I had an action, so I can't remember why. But it was I'm weird. Sure. It was fucking weird to write for this guy because I was like, it's so, I don't know what the fuck he wants. And then when I did do it, he's like, no, that's not what I want. I'm like, well, that's not what you fucking told me to do. <laughs> so it's just really hard. And especially because of the pandemic, you can't really meet people in person yeah. it was so fucking weird and I, i'll never do it again that's uh, <laughs> unless they pay me good fucking money it's hilarious what you, <laughs> you you try all sorts of things right right you have, is, you have to yeah it was like you have yeah you have to one out of 100 gets lucky yeah, yeah no shit <laughs> like i had to teach myself um how many bars have to be in a verse the difference between r&b pop and hip-hop there's different verse sizes you know pop's only eight bars fucking r&b's 12 rap is 16 I didn't know what the fuck 16 bars was. Like, I, I, and eventually, yeah, I had to teach myself this shit because it's important. You mm-hmm. can't just throw a song together anymore. No, I want it to be uh-huh. perfect. Well, and even you can't even understand the, what is it, like the structure of a song? Yeah. It's yep. like, it's like, how do you, if you're not trying to break it down to a science, how are you really, how do you really know that you're doing it right? Yeah. You know, and you're that's, just going. Yeah, you're just, Spinning your, you're just <laughs> slapping being words. a rapper. Tell me what's important about having a good producer and a good engineer behind you helping you with your music. Yeah, yeah. You need somebody that you have a good relationship with um, and that kind of sort of believes in you. I mean, they can really just take your money and do what the fuck ever. But if they don't like the song that they're, yo, you can tell the difference in my producer when he really likes a song or when he's just doing it mm-hmm. to get it done. You can tell the difference because a lot more effort and energy was put into the song that he was vibing along with. And he's like, yo, this is fucking dope. Yo, like, you know what I mean? And he'll throw in like, uh, as opposed to a song as, okay, I don't really like this style, but okay, I'll work with it and get it done for you. Mm -hmm. Now I can tell the difference. Like, okay, he didn't understand what I was doing there. Um, But whatever. That's why I want to learn that shit now on my own too, because what he does is so goddamn important Mm -hmm. without him. I'm nothing. My songs sound like yeah. shit. Well, and <laughs> the benefit, if you learn how to do it yourself yeah. and you can kind of do some demos and send off to mm-hmm. him, then he can really pick and choose from what he wants there. Yeah, And then exactly. you're taking the best 
say you do you write 50 songs, record mm-hmm. 50, 100 mm-hmm. songs in a year, you're taking the like the top 20% of what you've created and giving it to him, and then he can make that even better. Right. right? Yeah. So it's important to be able to do it and understand the science and how it's yeah. It's important for you to understand the song. Yeah. So that you but, can, and I'm getting so much better at writing and shit now. It's like I need to know the science behind the song. Why it is this way, why you do this, why you do that. And and just to have that nice conversation with him where we're on another level together, mm-hmm. where we both understand this language and I can actually get exactly what I want and learn more about doing this on my own, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's very intricate. When you see an opportunity to do something as an artist, it's important to do it. If you don't get out of your comfort zone, you're not going to grow. You're not going to learn and you're not going, you're not going to see everything for what it is. If if I don't try to write a song for this guy, for his brand, then I'm really not learning anything. I'm not really not growing as an artist. Like you only want to get better at what you do, right? So other people help bring that out of you by bringing different tasks to your table. It's crazy. I, I wrote Two songs for that movie. Um, And I'm not in the movie. I don't, I don't, I never saw the movie. I don't know what it's about, but it's amazing to see what he did with what I gave him, you know, because I'm like, holy fuck, bro. I actually think the song sucked, but he put shit on YouTube. It got mad reviews. Uh, Mm. They got written up in several newspapers and stuff. I was like, holy fuck. And if I didn't do that, well, I wouldn't have met all those people. And he had a whole list of female rappers he was working with. I met five new friends from that group, you know? So just the networking alone, it's it's amazing what connections and friendships you can get out of it. Now, you said you did a movie, or you did a song for a movie. Yeah, I did two songs for that movie. All right, so tell me a bit about that. Uh, So this guy approached me and said, I'm having female rappers um, do voice, I I guess, yeah, do songs for the movie. They were just going to play over violent scenes and shit. Um, he gave me all of the lyrics. He gave me keywords um, I was supposed to use and pretty much let me have free reign. He gave me two beats and said, I need this for that and that for this. And it took a while and it was a lot of back and forth and my engineer fucking hated me by the end of it. <laughs> but um, it's cool to see this guy's in the movies and how picky and important it was for him to get exactly what his vision was. You know, and and he helped a lot of female rappers out by giving us all this opportunity. He made an album out of all the songs that we did, posted it on YouTube. We got great reviews. Yeah, it was so fun. But I will never do it again. <laughs> I don't like it. It's, uh, <laughs> At least it's you just, tried it. It's great to step out of your comfort zone, but it's uncomfortable if you're not... I'm not able to be me because he was controlling everything. He was mm-hmm. controlling the words, the beat. So whatever, you know, like he said, you're supposed to speak only at this time and this time. And then it has to be blank. And then I'm like, holy fuck, man, doing this shit for movies is crazy. Mm-hmm. It's not like a soundtrack. It was for an actual scene in the movie, right? Yeah. Well, and so it, it's different. So and that's you helping somebody else with their vision. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And like yeah. definitely pros in terms of like building those relationships yeah. and getting that experience, like fuck having yeah. to <laughs> write a song a certain way. It's like yeah. it's like. It's how like, it as a songwriter, like, how narrow can you really put the boundaries of what you could do? <laughs> right. You know, it's like, but it's like being in that space is kind of like, a, what kind of, what do I create? Yeah. So it's, it's like, like how, how can I, how much better can I get? Yeah. And so, and that brings me to, you have done a song and there's been some relation to an MMA fighter. Uh, his name is Jeff Fuchs. Jeff Fuchs. And so, um, how did you end up working with him? Fuck, I've known him for many years. He used to date my cousin um, on the Italian side of my family. Mm-hmm. So... Like, I, I seen him all the time. He was a bodyguard at the strip club and shit. And he got into UFC fighting because he's a big fucking dude. And, uh, yeah, actually, there's an excellent story to this. So his very first fight was fucking insane. I don't remember where it was, but it was in London. Agriplex. Agriplex. And this shit was packed, bro. Okay, so the guy gets ready to fight, bro. Not even three seconds. Buddy fell on his ankle and the bone snapped. Oh. Yeah, man. That was the end of his uh, career. But I'll, he I'll came back. Yeah. He came back years later yeah. and was like, listen, I'm coming back. I'm doing a fucking comeback. I want you to do a theme song for me mm. where I walk out to the ring. I'm going to have the song playing. He never ended up using it and it was a lot of back and forth. I'm going back to the thing for the movie where he gave all the words. He picked the beat. If he didn't like a word, he was going to go change that word. 
Mm. Like it was a lot of back and forth and he didn't even end up using the song. But it's okay because it was it was such a, a cool thing to do, right? I would love to you still have that song. Yeah. So there's some really cool things that you could do with that. Cool. Um uh, actually the other guy I mentioned, Dan the Lost Boys. Like it I, I wanna I wanna try to see if I can onboard you into the NFT world because in, that man. would that's be very sick. successful there. Fuck yeah. Um that's cool. So here, explain it, the NFTs for him, because I I doubt he knows. Like a song. So ball it's a hack. it's a song, it's a digital file. No LPs. Like the it's like that. It's like you're buying a digital LP. And there's only 50 of these LPs made. Only 50 people can have this MMA song. Fucking this copies. is baseball cards. It's yeah, the same thing. Yeah. And so, it's just easier and it's more direct. You cut out the middleman. This is the way I get all the money. I don't have to pay fucking Spotify and I don't get you, you, nine you, cents. Spotify withholds your money. From Yo, you. and they give you like cents on the cents. Yeah, get you guys involved. Because yeah, because I'm very interested. You, in you guys are building the Taddy So Baddie brand. Right. And it's like, and just this is just one of the ways to exploit the Taddy So Baddy brand. Uh, Starbucks will have an NFT. And if you own this NFT, if you have it in your wallet, you go buy a drink, you get 10% off because you're part of this exclusive club. You have the yeah, Starbucks you NFT. Into the special club. I'm, all right, Taddy, I'm so glad that I have you, had you in today. Um, Thanks. I'm so glad. You're before, awesome. before I let you go, I've got to ask, like, where yeah. did the name come from? <laughs> This fucker right here. So <laughs> when when he met me, I was only I just turned nineteen, um, and uh, I was so young. Like I'm half his age. I was so young, and I was so excited, and I was so naive. Um, him and his best friend they started calling me Tadpole because I was so fresh out of like you know just okay. fresh, fresh little baby. I was I was so excited about everything. I was just a big dummy, um, and then eventually I grew into Taddy. And then when I did music, I said, I'm, I'm Taddy so baddie. Like, I'm fucking so baddie. And then the rhyming, the rhyming name, honestly, has been such a fucking big thing. Like, that, it helps because it rolls off your tongue. It's Taddy's branding. So baddie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so just over time. And then, the you know, the brand is a baddie. So yeah. it just works. Yeah, even my mom calls me Taddy, Taddy for fuck's sake. Taddy. I got everybody Taddy. Taddy. I like that. Yeah. Even when I when I used to work my normal jobs, like I just worked at a dispensary. I used to work at Foodland and Tim Hortons. They would all call me Taddy. If you have any advice for young artists wanting mm-hmm. to um, grow yeah. in the industry mm-hmm. and kind of get from level one to level two, what would you what would you say about that? Uh, consistency is key, and do not give up. If you really enjoy what you do, don't let anybody tell you to stop or that you're not good enough or or you know because even if you're not that good, you can always get better. Mm. Practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And and if you have a question that you would ask other artists in the music industry, what would that be? Yeah. How, how do you find your brand? How do you do it? Like what? How do you find what works for you? That's what I would awesome. want to know. Like you know, there's a lot of cool artists. There's a really awesome rapper named K Mac, and he is just Love this. It. He is just this amazing, fun loving, dope fucking rapper. And like. You know, he was just so comfortable to be around. But I'm like, fuck, how did you get how you are? Like, how did you know that that, that kind of music and shit will work for you? And, and you know, but... She actually did the track that came out. Yeah, it, oh, okay. it's not released. So a lot a lot of shit we don't release. I, I, that's on YouTube. You NFTs, know how to find it. NFTs are going to be the solution Right, that's what that. I want to do. That's direct. where the gold mine is. The fuck unreleased, yeah. private, exclusive content. I think that's such a yeah, gold mine. I'll, I'll, I'll get you set up with that. Because I like that's, it. It's, uh, yeah... Um, who do you who do you listen to locally? Like who who do you know mm-hmm. locally, artist wise? Uh, K Mac, I like. Um, fuck, what's that skinny nigga? Skinny nigga. I don't forget. His name, I cannot I remember Sick his track, name. Man. Yo, right there, right yo, Kush, something perform. Kush. He's a performer all the time. Like, like I'm. You gotta stop like, cutting me off because I'm trying to answer a question. You can't. <laughs> ten of us speak at the time. I know, but you can't. You can't edit it out if your voice is on top of my babe. We uh, well, and this is exactly why I want to. Um, this is why I want to move to the Bluetooth mics. Is why I want to get more people in a room. That's dope. You know, and it's yeah. like I'm still just testing things out with two cameras. You got a it's like I'm like though here, like you're you're. Doing thank it. you. Yeah. I want to have Fuck yeah. a camera on the desk, like somebody on the desk, somebody in that corner, somebody That's in that sick. corner, people on this couch, people in that corner. Right. I want to fill the room with people. I'm back. Um, I want to. I want to do like rap battles in here and like yeah. have artists. I want to have a few artists like do a day where like we'd lock in for like six to eight hours. Right? We get Just a food sponsor go. from a local. Oh, that's sick. You know, and we so we, we create a song together, mix, master, write, all that <laughs> what? shit. What? Do some food, release it as an NFT. What? And that's how, and so that's how we're going to I'm gonna signing start. up. Yeah. 
That's we'll get, dope. We'll get You're, you that's the incredible. Yeah. yeah, I like that. It's uh, it's gonna be fun. It's like the the direction and the success of the future is going to be behind the scenes content, just doing cool things with People other artists, love that shit. They eat it and up. just like putting out a project. It's like, it. what does it even take for us to like? Write a song in one day and, and release it as a product. And with all yeah. the creative minds yeah. you can bring together, that would be so. Yeah, that would be iconic. Yeah, this my podcast is a net for me to like sift through who's going places, who's doing things, mm. and like how can like we all do cool things together? You know, something some different. Content, you know, I don't it's like anybody's ever done that. Doing I love something, it. getting content, selling a product, and just making connections with other artists and, and showcasing stuff. everybody's talent. Yeah. like fuck yeah, yeah, that's gold. That's that, that's. Somehow I'll make that happen, but I'll count you in the first I, one. I have yeah. to, please, because that's that's dope. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Well, let's we'll officially end the podcast now. Hey. I'll hit stop. Boom, and that's Boom. it. Boom! That's it. Brr.